Hey friends, we are back at Nick T Live. I'm your host, Nick Taylor. I'm talking slow for some reason. Um, today I'm hanging out with Anna Nettles. Uh, Anna, how are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous. Awesome, awesome. So, so this is like, uh, I tweeted this out. I put a post on Dev2 as well, but it, this is a bit of an unorthodox stream, I guess, for maybe a coding stream, perhaps. But uh, um, so uh, we're going to talk more about this after, but uh, Anna, you're a certified personal trainer, but you've recently landed your first job in tech, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So that's awesome. Um, so uh, we talked about this. I, I can't remember if we talked about this at Render Atlanta or not, because I, I got to meet you in person, but uh, just had this idea of like, why don't we do a workout stream? Uh, one, because uh, I generally work out anyways, and it's something I enjoy. And I thought it would just be something fun to do. So we'll see how it goes. You're probably going to get to see me ugly sweat while uh, Anna, <laughs> Anna tells me what I'm to do. I'm probably ugly sweat too. It's going to be yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I, I'm going to go up into my gym in a second here. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick audio check with you again, Anna. So you should hear an echo once I turn the mic on again. So just let me know if you hear the echo. You hearing a bit of echo there? Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, like I said, the stream's a little different, so I'm going to be up in my gym. Normally I'm interacting with the chat when we're streaming. Uh, I won't be able to do that while I'm working out, unfortunately. Um, I will once we get back from working out. But if you have questions, still drop them in the chat. Uh, Anna's gonna be watching the chat. So if there is a question for me directly, I can answer it. But if if you have questions for Anna too, um, like I said, she is a certified personal trainer. So uh, uh, I know you have an online service as well. Is, is that right? I, I, yep. I kind of checked things yeah. out a bit before. So I'm all okay. online. Okay, so that's cool. And that's like, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is that uh, like in, not in-person training? Is that online training with you or is it just consulting or is it a bit of both or? It's just with me. So I have my own business and I offer one-on-one -on -one training virtually through Zoom. And then I have a small group strength trap uh, class through Zoom. And then I do okay. personalized programming for clients who are a little bit more comfortable in the gym, have their movement practice already and are just looking for like a plan to get them to their goals. Um, and I do that okay. through an app. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Cool. So we're going to head upstairs, I guess. So I'm going to take off these headphones. Um, and I'm just, you're going to see me kind of running up the stairs. So sorry for the, the blurry vision here. But uh, I'm going to... Now you can hear me okay still, Anna? Yeah, just with the echo. All right. So let's do this. All right. Uh, give me a second here. Sorry for all the noise. There is a leak in the house and there's a dehumidifier going off, but you won't hear that in a second. Okay. Do you have AC in the gym or? All right. Okay. So I should be able to hear you now, Anna. Okay. You yeah, I'm asking, do you have like a fan or AC in your garage or is it just? Whatever that, oh, no, that was. Do. That was in the kitchen. Do you still hear it? Yeah. Okay. I think that's. Um, I think that's just the audio on the iPhone is not as good. Um, no, I just mean like, are you able to keep cool in there, or is it pretty? Hot? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I do have a fan, but uh, I wasn't gonna put it on just because I think it's gonna make noise in the audio. But yeah, I'm gonna. I'll open up my window. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So. I've got here set up, but I can also, I guess just let me know what's best. Like I have, I usually when I'm working out in the morning over Zoom, I have it set up like over here. Yeah, and I would just, yeah, that's good. I just want to be able to see like some of your floor because we'll be doing some floor stuff. So I'll let you know if we need to change it, but this should be good to start. So, um, you know, you and I talked about this earlier, but we'll do a warm up probably a couple sets through, trying to make sure that we're staying in the time frame that we <laughs> imagine we would. Um, we'll start yeah. on the floor though for this one. And um, just make sure I can see from, yeah. Okay. Yes. So we're start on the floor and I'm gonna get into what I call a 90-90 position. So 
a 90 degree bend with your front and back knee. Um, ideally, that back knee is tracking with your hip. Okay, here. Not, not closed into your body, but kind of right in line with your hip. And then the same thing on the front, I want this kind of tracking straight out from my hip. From there, yeah. um, I'm gonna take uh, my back hand or the hand closest to my front leg. Yeah. And I'm gonna just kind of post up on that. I'm gonna take my opposite hand. Yeah. Push down on that front knee to encourage it not to move. I'm gonna lift my back heel off the ground or foot off the ground. Okay. And then I'm gonna bring my knee up towards the ceiling and then heel click or just do a little tap, but they're called heel clicks. And I'm gonna come back out. I'm gonna tap down on my knee, but not touch down with my foot. Okay. And then I'm just gonna do it again. So like I said, I call these heel clicks. Um, they're a mobility, a hip mobility exercise. Okay. Um, if you are pretty mobile in your hips, you may not feel this one as significantly. If you are not, you will feel this. It should feel pretty intense here in your hip socket. Yeah. Okay. Uh, SI, you want not in this hip, the other one. Uh, okay. Let's and we'll just do like five per side for now, and then we'll come back around. Okay. So then I'll switch. Same thing, just make sure your setup is. Um, right because uh, i'll dictate how challenging it is and how uh, true to your range of motion you'll be and, and come up with your foot first knee up towards the ceiling kind of drives the motion and then tap down with the heel back out without touching the foot down okay. and the more upright you are the more challenging it's going to be the more you lean um yeah, it's definitely harder trying to go up straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, just work with whatever your range is for now. Obviously, if this is something that you did more often, it would get a little bit easier for you. But whatever you got, fine. All right. All right. And then second, we're gonna do stay down. But um, do you have? Let's use your door over there. I just want you to have some wall space. Yeah. You're just gonna get in a half kneeling position with your inside leg um, on the wall. So that's the that's gonna be bent. Okay. Like that? Yeah, do you have space? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna reach both my arms forward and then I'm gonna take my outside arm and twist back. Okay. And I would just keep that right hip on the wall as you do that. This is just getting some T spine rotation. Okay. Do I just hold it or I keep going? I'm just going to do it for reps. So I would do five reps per side. Um, I would probably pause for a second at the end of that um, rotation just to get, you know, <laughs> make sure you're being thorough. And then um, I'll just say this for other people, but if this feels easy, then you could just add a band, like a light rope band to your hands to add a little bit more resistance to the movement. This is not easy for me <laughs> in my rotation. And then, yeah, I just switch sides. Yeah, it's, I'm able to rotate. I'm generally pretty mobile. It's just, uh, I've definitely had tons of sports injuries that have uh, decreased mobility sometimes. So. Yeah. For people who sit a lot, these like rotational types of exercises are great because we're obviously not rotating um, in our rotating chairs <laughs> ever. So definitely something to put in uh, your warm ups if you're not. Um, third, yeah, that looks good. Third is gonna be um, grab your foam roller. Yeah. And we're just gonna warm up your hamstrings. So I'll show you from this direction. So I'm gonna put one foot on my roller, kind of just at my natural arch. I'm gonna just hang on to my other knee to keep it into my chest and I'm gonna bridge up on that foam roller and then control back down. You can hover your hips or you can touch all the way down if you need a rest. It's up to you. And I would do like eight to 10 per side on this one. Should feel some hamstrings and then relax your head. Okay. Yeah, I definitely feel hamstring. Is it too much? Uh, no, it's, I mean, I definitely feel tension. It feels like I could get like a Charlie horse kind of thing, but it's- Oh yeah, 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 that's totally normal. Yeah, if you're hamstring cramps on this one, um, uh, relax and breathe and then 
try again. <laughs> it should go away. Also, if you want to try bi bilateral, so both feet on this one and see if you can get a little bit more uh, range of motion um, as far as your hips go, you can do that as well. I, it's easier on my right side. Um, yeah. I think that's also, I've had a lot of lower limb trauma. <laughs> yeah. Broke my right ankle, chipped my left ankle, and I've torn both calves before. The the you can't see it now, but the my right calf is like a lot bigger. <laughs> mm -hmm. I definitely feel the cramps though. Does this feel doable or no? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I just want and to like I said, if you want to put both feet on the foam roller and just do bridges like that, it'll be the same effect. Um, but the foam roller is nice because you can't cheat out of your hamstrings on this one. A lot of times when people do bridges from um, feet on the floor, they'll be kind of arching through their back a lot. Um, yeah. This kind of kicks on hamstrings without having to think too much about it. Yeah, cool. definitely feel the cramps. <laughs> yeah, they get better as you uh, keep up with that one, but it's totally normal. Um, and then last one, and then we'll do it all again real quick. Uh, it's just going to be a down dog variation, but I do want your feet on the wall or your door. And what I'm going to do is start in plank position. And then when I go back into down dog, yeah. come forward, I'm going to drive one knee into my chest and then come back out. So down okay. dog, knee drive, down dog, knee drive down dog, knee drive, and then just keep your feet pressed up against your wall that whole time. Okay, so it's like a, a down dog with a mountain climber? Um, yes, but yeah, arms will stay straight in like a long arm plank position. So it should get some shoulder mobility on this one, some hamstring stretch, and then obviously some abs when you go into that knee drive. Yeah. If I start talking less, you'll know why. <laughs> I know. I'm already like, okay, this is the warm up. <laughs> it's, it's serving its purpose. Cool. I like this one though because it's a combo move. So, like I said, we're getting some shoulder um, mobility and stability for that matter, hamstring stretch, and then adds on for our strength work. Cool. And then, whenever you're ready, you can go back to the heel clicks. Okay, yep. And then, like I said, just on these ones, if you want to make it more challenging, drive your knee up higher, stay taller, and then make sure that front knee doesn't come off the ground. Yeah. <clears throat> I always find it not funny, but how when sometimes, like, you know, people just think lift heavy things, and then, like, you do stuff like this, which are important, and then they're, like, basically can't do it. I know. It's like the most humbling experience. <laughs> I, know. I was at, um, so I did, uh, so I did exercise science as my bachelor's degree. And then I did an internship at a strength and conditioning gym, um, in Michigan and, um, had like the best mentor there, but he would always do that. You know, like you think you're like tough and strong and then he would give me like the most basic <laughs> thing and just wreck me, you know? Yeah, yeah. In a good way. Like it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't like the dumb stuff that you'll see um, where it's just for like the hell of it. Like, let's just make it hard. It, you know, it was good for my body, you know, in a challenging position for my body. Um, yeah. So uh, the side on the wall now? Yep. So it's T-spine rotation. So just making sure, you know, getting some rotation through your spine and then, um, yeah, eyes follow hand. Perfect. And like I said, if this one felt easy um, and you want to do it again, you could always grab like a mini rogue band and then just use that to pull apart. Well, I'm definitely getting warmed up. Okay. Well, let me know if you don't feel ready for it, because I know you do quite an extensive warm up too um, on your own days. So. Oh, yeah, no, it's all good. I think we can. Did you want to do just the two sets of these and then get started? Yep. It's probably fine because I usually work, I usually get up at six in the morning to work out and the engine's a little cold at that moment, so. Mm -hmm. And then uh, down dog with the knee tucks. 
Um, do those glue bridges first, but I want, um, can you show me like a lateral view? So can you lay along with your wall on that one and then use both feet for that for this time? Like this? Yep. And then when you come up, I want you to give me like a full exhale um, as you bridge up. Okay. So at the top, you should have no more breath. Yeah. And then if this felt easier, but, um, and you want a little bit more challenge, as you bridge up, you can pull your heels in towards your hips a little bit more, your glutes a little bit more. So kind of roll that foam roller a tad as you bridge up. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I feel and it. And as you kick it back on, yeah. Yeah. How many for this again? This one I would do 10. I mean, we're, we're gonna do some, like I told you, some posterior chain stuff, so. Um, You'll be getting glutes and hamstrings later. All right. Cool. Great. All right. Lift. <laughs> okay. So for your first one, um, we're just going to do, um, oh yeah, do that. Do five per side on that one without the, um, yeah, the push up. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I skipped. Good job remembering. <laughs> Feeling good? Yeah, I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling warm. Okay, um, I was saying for your first one, we're gonna do an assisted RDL, which you've probably done before, and I'm just adding a knee drive in. So uh, near something that you can kind of hang on to, and then for weight, obviously, I don't know your normal range, so we can just call, you know, first set more like a warm up set, and then we'll go up from there. But um, you'll just need one dumbbell. I'm okay. just going to use my wall as the assist, but if you have something sturdy that you can hang on to, you can use that. I'm going to go back into my RDL, so hinge backward, my foot's reaching towards the wall behind me, and then when you come up, I want you to stand up tall, and then again, drive your knee up into your chest. So this bottom leg will be locked out, you're going to drive your knee into your chest, and then you'll go back into the RDL. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to hold on because... Uh... Yeah, 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 don't do this without holding out. Yeah. You won't be able to get as much out of it because you'll just be trying to not fall over. I'm pretty coordinated, but with having broken my ankles, uh, it, the proprioception is something I'm always working on. So Yeah. Is this okay? Yes. I would just probably bend that right knee just a tad less. Oh, okay. So I think hips back more. Yeah, there you go. And then forward. Or like deadlift? Um. Yes, you had it before. So now unlock your knee just a touch. Okay. There you go. And then I just want you to turn your belly button towards that right leg as you go back. Okay. So don't let that hip flare out. Yeah. And then I just want you doing six per side on this one. So if this feels easy, um, let's move up and wait for the next set. You don't have to do it now, but next set will go up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, let me move up a bit. Yeah, it, it's definitely easier with holding on to something because when I do this, it's not holding on and it's super difficult. I do it without weight. Yeah, I, I'll i warm up with the body weight ones and doing them like unassisted. But if I'm trying to actually load my hips, I'm not going to be able to do it with, you know, body weight unassisted. It's better to just like hang on to something and go heavier. Um, so this one's still on that left leg. Yeah. Um, make sure that knee doesn't travel too far forward. So it's just a, a little stacked over that left ankle. Yeah. And then really push that right foot back. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I mean, just looking to feel that left butt cheek, uh, left hamstring, obviously. So if you've got that, then you're good. Um, second, we're going to go to <laughs> uh, TRX hamstring curls. Have you done this before? Uh. Well, I know hamstring curls are, but I don't know what those ones are. Okay. So I we'll see if this works with your, your TRX. I imagine it will. Um, but I would just hang it down as you normally would. And then your heels are going to go in those stirrups. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to lay on the ground. You'll lift your butt and then pull your heels in towards your glutes. Oh, okay. okay. Dominic, I see you're in the chat. <laughs> How's it going? Who's in the chat? Yeah. 
No, no, I didn't hear who's in the chat. Oh, Dominic. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't realize you knew Dominic. Yeah, well, we just met a um, render. It was a, it was a party. So go lay on your back for this one. Okay. So flip over to your back. Yes. Yeah, or is this how you go into it? Yeah. Oh, that's true. Okay, okay. I see what you mean. I was not following instructions. Okay. And then it might be easier to put your heels in those stirrups instead of um, okay, yeah. midfoot. So yeah. usually what I'll do is, um, oh, I should have had this down here for an example. Usually what I'll do is I'll get to like a boat sit, yeah, and then just put my feet in the stirrups and then lay down. <laughs> I'm having trouble here. But. Do they go lower? How far off the ground are they? Because you don't need them that high up either. Lord. And you said just get my heels in there? Yep. And the bottom stir up. Did you get it? I think so. Okay. Yeah, they don't need to be super high off the ground. So then you'll just lay on your back long. And then you're going to lift your butt up off the ground by just kind of tucking your butt up underneath you. Yeah. And then you'll straighten legs and then bend legs by bending your knees into your chest. Okay. Like that. This would be pretty gnarly too for your hamstrings. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me know if it was like too, too much fun. <laughs> yeah. And then this one I would do 12 reps for, 10 to 12, depending on how challenging it feels. I'm definitely not getting cramps like the other one, but it's, it is still, it's that uh, I'm not used to doing it this way, doing it, you know, reversed on a bench. Do you do it with like a dumbbell for those or? Uh, at my house, I don't, but like if I'm in the gym, I would use like the, just the curl machine for the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the thing about home is it is hard to get hamstrings. Like I'll do these um you know like the walkouts on foam roller or the sliders you can do like the dumbbell ones but they're still like you can't really load them up as hard as you can go in the gym and then third i'm gonna have you grab that booty band we're gonna stay on the ground um any particular so i would do like a you could probably do like a medium resistance but i would not go heavy so if you I've got, I only have heavy and, and Okay, so go the lightest of your heavies. And then it's gonna go actually on your feet. So come down to the ground, you can watch me. So it's gonna go around my arches. This is actually, we're gonna do an ab exercise. It has nothing to do with, with our booties, but um, it's very good for that. So it's gonna go around like the arches on my feet. Okay. And then I'm gonna bring my right elbow to my left knee. Oh, okay. And then I want you to try and keep your straight leg heel on the ground. So you're driving that into the floor. And then I want you to think about, instead of like crunching up, rolling to the side to get to that knee. Yeah. Cool. Yes. And this one you can do five to 10 per side, depending on how challenging it feels. Um, but you should feel a lot of things going on here. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so. Uh, some obliques, hip flexors, which need some love for most of us sitting all the time. And then sometimes I'll feel that left glute and that left hamstring from driving into the floor. I actually really like this exercise. This is good if you're like a runner or sprinter, especially, because this is basically what you're doing. I mean, like the rotation and knee drive. Those look nice. <laughs> you did well with that heavy. I underestimated you. Look at that. I, I have uh, pretty strong legs. And the we do a lot of band stuff. So. Yeah, okay. Nice. And then we'll run it back to those RDLs. And you're welcome to go heavier on those if you feel like you're up for it. What's the RDLs again? Yeah. So we're shooting for six reps. So something in that, you know, heavier range, ideally, but do what you're comfortable with. Uh, I'll grab a 25, I guess. And 
and said six, right? Yep. Nice. Yep, that's it. And then just drive that left knee up at the top. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Do you always work out with shoes too? I do. It's uh, the main reason help? I have orthotics. Yeah. So I like, it's like if I walk on the beach for too long, it's like my feet. Are... So yeah. More like paranoia, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna move up a bit. <laughs> you can angle out into your space too if you, if you, if that makes more sense. Yeah, I'll do that. Because I'll still be able to see you well. I'm starting the ugly sweat. <laughs> hey, what's up? You want to be on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> and my daughter's just looking for something. Like the bike pump. Uh, bike uh, Right, give me one second. All right, what's the next one, uh, Anna? Uh, your next one is the uh, curls, the hamstring curls. And I was going to say, it might be, you can decide. Um, my foot is smaller than yours, probably. Um, but you might find that it's easier to put your, um, the sole of your foot on the outside of that strap. I should really get some TRX and put that on my Christmas list. Uh, instead of tucking them in, having them sit, um, like your, your forefoot would be on that edge. But yeah, if that works, keep doing that. I'll send you a video next time and that way you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. But yeah, give me like 12 of these if you got it. On this round, I would say try and exhale as you bring your heels into your glutes so that your chest doesn't start to raise. Yeah. And low back can stay a little bit more relaxed. Yeah, so exhales just kind of keep like ribs down um, and help with keeping like that back from getting too extended. Hey, Becca. I don't know what the bike pump is. I quite forgot it. Just come here. I just got it. All right. What's next? <laughs> okay. Um, and then those banded cross connects. So grab your uh, band around your feet. You'll lay down. And then, like I said, five to 10 per side. Those looked really good last time. So just keep doing your thing there. And then we'll go to your second um, series. We're like 30 minutes in right now, so I think we're doing good on time. All right, cool. And then same thing here if you want to, full exhale as you do elbow to knee. It definitely helps. I just forget sometimes. Yeah, it, yeah, it's... Well, we won't get into it, but obviously breath is connected um, yeah. on a very deep level for pretty much everything we do. Sweet. Cool. Doing great. I love this. <laughs> I'm melting, but... Uh... I don't like... Check in. Are you hydrated? Need some electrolytes? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I got to cool. All good. Okay. Second one. I In my head, um, I imagined you doing some TRX pull-ups. Have you done those before? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, just, like, make them higher. And then I would have you sit on the ground below them if you can. And then just, you know, pull up from the floor. Only six though, so um, hey James. <laughs> Only six, so make them as easy or as hard as you need to to get that rep range. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Do you have a pull up bar there or no? I bought one. It's not installed yet. Yeah. And the second one, we're going to use your TRX too, but we're going to use it for face pulls. Yeah. Have you done those? Are those like upright rows or what are you? I'll show you from here because the angle is a little bit weird on this one, I will say, but it's really good for all of us, uh, you know, desk sitters. So I'm just going to use my rogue band, but I'm not having to use your TRX for it because I actually think it's better. Oh, I'll angle off this way. But I'm going to go, hands are going to come up at like the crown of my head, elbows are going to go out, and I want you above your shoulder level with your uh, elbow. So not here like a high row, yeah. but up here. Okay. But this works really well with the TRX, especially if you think about kind of driving your elbows out to opposite walls as you come back. Um, you should feel pretty good um, rear delts on that one. So I'm going to have to turn it. You'll actually want to go the other direction. So I want your body facing the TRX and then pulling yourself into it. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. If that makes sense. Yeah. I'm just going to try to give you a. Oh, yeah. I was like, you probably could have gone the other direction, but you'd already set up this way. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yep. And then, like I said, I feel like over time, you're probably going to want to drop your elbows a little bit. So just make sure they stay above shoulder level. And then thinking about driving elbows out to opposite walls instead of just back. And yeah. That's I, some rear delts. I, yeah, I feel it in my, a bit my traps and rear delts. Yeah, that works. And then this one you can go for... Um, 10 to 12 reps too, so a little bit higher rep range. Yeah. Cool. These ones I'll do like throughout the day in between sitting, cause I'm, you know, I stay here too. So like I'll get up and just do some pulls, just the reset. And then your last one is gonna be hollow body pullover. So you could use a dumbbell two dumbbells, a weight plate, just depending on what size or uh, weight you want. I'm gonna use a dumbbell because that's all I have in the range that I would want. But we're gonna hold, you've probably done these before, hold a hollow body position, and then go overhead, and then back over my chest. Oh yeah, yeah, it's for what your thighs muscles? What'd you say? I can't remember, it's, it's for those, is it thighs muscles, the yeah, I mean, it's technically like a lat exercise. I'll say like it's arguable how much you'll actually feel that, but I mainly threw it in for um, core and then a little bit of extra back work. I'm just going to take this off. I'm definitely uh, getting work out in today. We haven't even got to conditioning yet. Woo! <laughs> it's not CGI, people. I'm out. What'd you say? It's not CGI, I'm actually sweating. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while, so I'm just going to do a 25. Yeah, I was going to say, if you have a 25-pound weight plate or, um, or dumbbell, I would probably start there on this one. Because um, you're going to be tempted to let your back round. I won't be able to see you at this um, angle, but if you're already down there, knock them out. There you go. Yeah, so your goal is basically to avoid letting your back kind of arch as you go overhead and keeping low back tucked into the floor. And then straighten those legs out. I'm just using the BOSU to get a bit more range. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice. How many did you say? I would do 10 to 12 on this one. We don't need to go super high. Yeah. Or less if that's, you know, too heavy and you just want to stay there. It's fine. You do have some pretty good uh, shoulder mobility. Yeah, I've, uh, I'm generally pretty mobile. It's just, just unfortunately had some injury. But yeah, yeah. I never had a shoulder injury from rugby. So. So we're back to um, definitely rest, obviously, but your next up is going to be those TRX pull-ups um, and then the face pulls and then the hollow body pullovers. And then we'll do just a little bit of conditioning. 
and then <laughs> let you catch your breath. Oh yeah, it's all good. I only have limited time to work out these days, so I cut my zip. You said because you have what? I don't have much time to work out these days, so I, I, I kind of maximize it as much as possible. Oh yeah, yeah. Are you technically like working right now or how do no. these streams okay? <laughs> I'm always like these are big chunks of time. Yeah, no, I usually work out in the morning. When I stream, I I just take a little longer lunch and then Okay. Later. <sighs> how many of these again? Ten to twelve. So it should be burning a little bit. Um it is. <laughs> I know, I kind of stacked the muscle groups uh, to make it a little bit more fun. Right. Sweet, and then just those pullovers. And then we're gonna do some kettlebell, kettlebell fun. Yeah. I was gonna say, you're welcome to keep your knees bent if, um, if you want to. Uh, just whichever way you feel like you can get a little bit more abs engaged on this one. Okay, uh, straight helps. Okay. This okay? Yes. And yeah, exhale as you go overhead like you're doing. Apparently there's gonna be a squat competition between Becca and James. <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> I, I love James, but I got my back. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think uh, that might be a consensus. <laughs> so for your, um, I mean, take a drink and stuff, but for your, um, for the kettlebell, I'm thinking you'll, well, yeah, we'll use your, what is that, 53, as we said? Uh, yeah, three. Okay, and the only movement I think that I might need to um, kind of just show you first, I'm sure you'll know what I'm talking about when I get there, but um, yeah, it is a goblet squat clean. So we're gonna do a few in, we're gonna do a few in a row and then rest after. But the only thing with that is I want you to try and catch the bell. So it'll be like a regular um, clean, so two handed clean. But I want you to try and catch the bell in the squat position, so it would look like this, and then up. So I'm just kind of bringing the bell here to a regular goblet clean. We're gonna try and catch it low, and then stand up with it. Other than that, I think you're pretty, well, from what we talked about, I think you're pretty straight. So I'm gonna do this with you. I'm gonna get a out of breath too. Okay. So <laughs> we're gonna do 10 kettlebell swings. I'll keep count um kettlebell clean for eight so just a regular clean and then the squat clean for six and then we're gonna do push-ups for six just for fun um what's ball clean like i know what a clean is with the bar but so you're just gonna float it up to like just below your chin so you're just gonna stand up fast and okay. up the top. so it's just a regular clean yeah you can watch me too so start off with the kettlebell uh the squat clean um, we're going to start with swing, so we're going to go 10 swings whenever you're ready. Yeah. One more, if you're following my speed, which might be a little off. Huh? Yep, I'm going to go right into a regular clean. So I'm going to go chest up, butt down, and then just stand up fast. Pull it underneath my chin for eight. It's okay. Yep. Yep. And then we're going to do six of those goblet squat cleans. Yeah. Cool. So this one you're going to catch down and then stand up. Yeah. 
And just six on that. And then we'll do six push-ups. <laughs> then we'll rest like a full minute. <laughs> Bling twice if you're still alive. <laughs> but yeah, catch your breath. We'll do one or two more rounds and then we'll call it. Just gotta get some fresh air. <laughs> little dust fan I'm like I might turn this on <laughs> all right you got like 15 seconds and we're gonna do it again so 10 swings eight regular cleans where you're standing up nice and tall like in a plank position six of the squat cleans and then six push-ups yeah. ready yeah okay And then six of the goblet squat cleans, but do you feel like your legs are more tired right now or your arms? Uh, just uh, winded in general. Okay, all right, that's fair. Six, right? Yep. So just try and catch it as deep into your squat as you can. Up when you're like looking forward to the push ups, <laughs> they're like, okay, cool, we can do it. I'm sorry, Nick. <laughs> I'm sure like not having your fan is killing you. <laughs> yeah, I think I might have to bow out to the third set. <laughs> no, yeah, we'll be done. I would just like, I would probably, I mean, recover where we want to recover, but if it were me, I'd probably just lay on the floor and just do like some breathing real quick to like cool down. Because generally, I don't do like post workout stretching per se, but I do recommend, you know, clients just like chill and yeah. let their body recover before they just walk around the gym. That was definitely a very good workout, though. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was solid. You did a great job. Crushed it. Like right on time, too. Love that for us. Cool, cool. All right. Head back downstairs.
gonna towel off real quick and I'll <laughs> yeah, okay. see in a second. Okay. All right. I know, right? <laughs> like, what does running a stream even mean? <clears throat> uh, any questions about like what you just witnessed or? <laughs> I've got zero jokes. Holy crap. You hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. I just gotta get my headphones on. Hold on a sec. Cold towel. Whew. Fuck. That was, that was, no, it's all good. That was, uh, that was really good. Yeah. That conditioning thing you can do obviously with lighter weight, go faster. Like there's so many ways you can play around with the kettlebell stuff, but I like yeah. that one. Yeah, I think uh, I've got to get a lighter set of kettlebells, like you were saying, yeah. just for some other yeah. movements. Yeah, because I would love uh, for you to like start playing with snatches and even like get ups too, for sure. Um, would be good. But yeah, that 50 is gonna be a lot to start with. <laughs> yeah, no, the 50 I was using more for the goblet squats and like swings. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I haven't done too many, yeah, still sucking wind a bit. Uh, I still haven't done too many kind of uh, big movements with kettlebells. I definitely want to get into them though. Like the, cause I think from what I've read, like one arm movements are typically what you start off with and then you progress to double. Is that the case or, or does it yeah. really matter? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Unless you're doing like the two handed stuff, like with, with swings, you would start with a two handed swing and not a single. Yeah. 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 Uh, I can see the chat now. Uh, yeah. Or, or, or We're good. <laughs> yeah. 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 We all know uh, what just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, Orion's asking when to take a break to work out or from coding or whatever. I don't know what you do, Anna. I do it. I get up at typically, anywhere between six, six fifteen, And then I work out at seven. It's just, I typically was never good at working out early. And when the pandemic hit, I bumped into uh, a buddy of mine who's a personal trainer. And he's like, I do these zoom sessions at seven. So that's basically why I started doing it then. But I've really enjoyed it because um, it just gets it out of the way out of the day. Yeah. Like I, I know even when I was even more active, if I was trying to work out from home, I'd just be like, yeah, I'll do it in a bit. I'm going to have a coffee. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then next thing I know it, my, uh, my pull up dip rack is like a coat hanger place. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Uh, but it is. Yeah. Cool. I would usually right. go like early for a long time. I would go like early afternoon just because like, I'll usually have clients in the morning or in the evening. And so like lunch, yeah. you know, that sweet spot is like, early afternoon. But I found like recently kind of the same thing of just like, it'll just keep getting put off and put off for work. And then I won't do it. And I don't like that. So recently I've started going around like seven in the morning. Um, yeah. Which still doesn't feel like too early for me. And that way, like you said, I just know it's handled. I don't have to worry about it. If I get like stuck in work, it's still done. So. Yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, I guess the thing is, you know, like, whatever works out best for your schedule. Exactly. You know, like, yeah. I know some people are more like nighttime people, but I'm, I'm not, I'm done at like 10 PM. <laughs> yeah. I'm, ready. I'm mentally done and physically done. So I'd rather wake up early and do it, but yeah, whatever yeah, works for sure. For I've definitely worked out in the evening. The problem is I'm just too wired. And then I'm like, it's one in the morning and I'm still like, boop, 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 boop. Oh, really? you know, it's like, it's like, I, I don't know. It could also be related to drinking too much caffeine before working out too, but uh, which is probably more oh, likely. Yeah. 
I used to do like a pre-workout at like 8, 8.30 when I got off of work, go to the gym and I would still go home and go straight to bed. Like, I don't know how it didn't like keep me wired, okay. but I just crashed. Yeah, I I typically don't eat anything before. Like I didn't eat anything today yet, but I usually when I wake up, I just have a coffee, chug a pint of water and then like I'll work out and then I'll eat. Depends, like... I'll have a protein shake or sometimes I just eat like almonds or something and then I'll have something bigger after. But uh Do you feel lightheaded? No, no, no. I'm just uh yeah, I'm just like, I'm just trying to talk about it. Having food sometimes can Oh yeah. No, I'm I, I, I don't get lightheaded and it's I used to have this I don't think I'm the only person, but like when I was in high school, because I started working out when I was like sixteen and I would be like eating you know, plate of pasta two hours before working out. And then it, if you're doing like sports, you definitely need all those carbs yeah, like, to burn sure. off. Yeah. But like, but I don't know, I've discovered, at least for me, like I don't need it before I work out because I have energy stored like, right. the day before, you know? Yeah. And I don't know, I just been finding it works better for me because if I ate something before working out, then I, because your body starts digesting it and yeah. then you're like, so anyways, TLDR, I just have a coffee and water before work it. <laughs> all right, cool, cool. All right. I'd love, I, I would honestly talk to you about working out all day, but yeah, no, I do, yeah. <laughs> but I, but I do want to talk about you now because, uh, this is a fun stream. It's unorthodox, like I mentioned, but the, aside from you putting me through a grinder of a workout, uh, I wanted to talk about you getting into tech, um, I, yeah, and uh, James wants to know more too. Um, so I, I met you at Render ATL, and I we talked a little bit. A bunch of us were hanging out, like mm -hmm. you, me, James, and like uh, Michael Leando and a couple people. And I, I saw you were talking to Michael. You're like, oh, I'm trying to get something on AWS. And so one, it was cool seeing you just reach out for help. I don't know if you knew him before or not, but I did not. Um, I'm just a desperate okay. <laughs> engineer. Yeah, yeah. You, no, but that's cool. You don't even know what's going on here. You want to help? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that was cool though because like you're you're starting your first engineering job. I think August fourteenth. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I've talked to a lot of people over the past few years, like it, whether it's in virtual coffee or the collab lab where I volunteer, or just like phone calls with people, or, like a lot of early career devs or career transitioners and. You know, I just think it would be cool to kind of, you know, how did you get into tech? How did mm -hmm. you land the job? Because I'm not saying what you tell us is going to get right, somebody else yeah. a job, but I think it'd be cool to hear what you did because uh, other people might find it useful. So, yeah, happy, I'll just keep, I'll just keep sweating while you do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So technically the job that I have or that I'll be starting on Monday is a product support role. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that too. But um, so I did, my transition into tech was basically, I did um, bachelor's in exercise science. I pivoted to online, you know, after the pandemic, after working in a gym for years um, okay. and doing my internship. And then kind of like everybody did, we'll go virtual, started building my own business and then saw a lot of success from that. Like a lot of people did, you know, early adopters. And then yeah. um, pretty much built what I had set out to do, if that makes sense. Okay. So working for myself, I work with the clientele that I want to work with. Um, I work the hours that I want to work. So, you know, I talked yeah. about like, the crazy hours in the beginning, but now my schedule is so, <laughs> so cushiony. <laughs> um, and I worked really hard for that. So I'm proud of it. But, um, yeah. and you know, raising my rates when it was hard to feel like I, you know, deserved more, if you will. But I kind of just got to a place where I felt like I didn't have that same drive or um, next goal, if that makes sense in my professional career. So, yeah, you know, when you get to like the top of where you want to go, usually there's something on the horizon or I'm someone who kind of is always chasing something. Um, and I just yeah. didn't feel like anything was speaking to me. And so I kind of started opening up my mind to different options or um, pivots, if you will. And tech came okay. into the picture. So I trans I started going to um, General Assembly, their boot camp. It's a part time boot camp last March and then okay. um, did that all through the summer. And honestly, I chose software engineering because I really do like the, the creating of it. I like that there's a little bit of logic to it. Um, working with humans okay. for a long time, it's like 
there's so much nuance about everything <laughs> that I'm like, if I could have like a little bit more, just <laughs> some black and white, like the computer is like, okay, it either yeah. works or it doesn't. And there's lots of ways to like achieve that goal, but it works or it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was kind of definitely looking for a little rest from the um, heavy emotional part of coaching um, okay. or only coaching, if that makes sense. And then I had seen some holes in the industry too. Like there's apps where I feel like what's offered to fitness and in the health and fitness space are all the same in some ways. And I wanted to be able to create something different or work on some work with someone on creating something different. Um, okay. I would not say that I'm at the expertise level of creating that something different yet, but the ideas are still there. Um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, pivoted. I graduated in September. I started looking for jobs um, with GA to get career help. You have to apply to at least 10 jobs per week, go to X amount okay. of meetups. You know, they're basically like, we can't help you if you're not helping yourself. So they kind of make okay. you do some things. I would say if I wasn't expected to do that, I don't know that I have, would have started applying. I definitely didn't feel like I was ready to apply yet, but I wanted the help okay. like I had paid for the help. Um, but I'm just like, all right, I'm here. I graduated. And then everyone tells you like, don't wait. If you feel like you're good to go. There's just so many yeah. messages I feel like with experience level, yeah. who takes on who, who got lucky. So I'm like, well, why not? just apply. Yeah. Um, I did all the things. So I was listening to Taylor Dustin. I mean, literally LinkedIn everywhere, all the resources, just the most, um, anyone who's in the job search, I'm sure knows what that means, but just the networking, yeah, yeah. going to in-person stuff. Cause I actually do like people and meeting people. So I go, there's luckily in Atlanta, there's a lot of um, local stuff. Um, yeah. Doing that, the coding challenges, trying to make my projects better trying to like teach myself over again what I feel like was completely just like um fast tracked in the boot camp like I felt like I was still missing a lot of fundamentals so you know just juggling all that I eventually got a internship in December and this is what I tell some people that you know be hang out on the platforms that aren't as popular so I was on yeah. poly work um and the only okay, reason yeah, I got yeah. that was through Taylor He's like, you gotta get on Polywork. So I'm like, okay, I'm on Polywork. Um, now what? Uh, and I had just seen like an internship, you know, someone looking for someone to do an internship. And I'm pretty yeah. sure it's because I'm, you know, a little crazy and just all the alert. So I was probably one of the first 10 people to apply to this thing. Um, and yeah. did the technical, got it. That was an AWS heavy um, internship. It was okay. very informal, unpaid. Um, luckily okay. I'm in a position to be able to do that. I know a lot of people aren't. So at that time I just felt grateful to have any type of opportunity, um, yeah. to be able to support myself. So did that for a while. That was when I found Michael because, um, my mentor was fantastic, but it is a, it was a very tech, like complicated thing that we were doing and it was just me and him. And yeah. he was kind of like, I could give you some stuff to do on like the UI or like front end stuff. But if you want to figure out AWS, like email system, you can. Yeah. And I'm the type who's like, well, what's the most helpful? Like, I just like to feel like I'm contributing and, you know, being a part of a team is like really important to me. So uh, I was like, well, if you don't want to do it and it needs to be done, like this is the next step of the product. Let me just work on that. And that was a whole yeah, yeah. thing. And it was a whole okay. thing mainly because we obviously, he, we were working with like crypto. So like Solana wallet and um, stuff. I didn't even like know what was going on, but um, we had a lot of permissions and things to work out my automated stuff. But I found Michael cause he had a lot of AWS things. And this is what I've tried to tell people too, is that one thing that I think you, anyone's probably mentioned this, but like the developer community is just so nice and helpful. Um, yeah like reach out <laughs> like there's lots of people who are willing to help um and so sure. i had reached out to him just kind of like hey i saw your youtube it was super helpful thank you because i've been searching the internet <laughs> for how to figure this out um yeah yeah and he was great and has been you know kind of a mentor in some ways to me too throughout this and um he's yeah he's been really great 
So oh, awesome. that kind of ended. Um, and then I actually started a new internship. Um, this one I'm really, really excited about. And even though I had this new job, I'm going to hang on to it. So it's a okay. fitness education app. So this is, I'm basically working on the app or a type of app that I would have imagined for myself when I first okay. you know, got into the industry. So um, it is, they're kind of like X trainers. So X Equinox, you know, master trainers is the CEO. Um, it's basically like a Udemy or Coursera for fitness education. So okay on-demand yeah, videos cool. for kettlebell 101 or whatever coaches are most of the coaches i know are using like kajabi and things like that or their own websites to host their content but this yeah. would be like a marketplace of all of it um so we're putting that together <laughs> and i'm pretty really excited about it what's up so i'm laughing in the chat at lawrence oh, yeah. <laughs> and part you're making yeah. i only <laughs> mentioned that i'm a ta for my boot camp too but yeah there were like four <laughs> jobs at one time two interns it's fun um yeah we're just like yeah. doing everything we can. Um, but yeah, so I'm working on that. That's still unpaid, but I did get offered like equity, you know, whatever, like they're trying and they're closer to getting funding than my other internship yeah. was. So I really love that position. It's just, you know, okay. not paying bills. So I'll hang on yeah. to that. Um, and then I took a time off from applying to get back to the job search. So I got married in June, took a few months off because I just didn't want the stress of technical interviews interfering with like the, the emotions that I wanted to have going into my wedding. Like I wanted that to have precedence and it not be like this stressful yeah. time. So took off from uh, applying. And then I think the week of my wedding, I applied to this position and I had started kind of looking at different types of roles just because it's not like I grew up wanting to be an engineer. Like I don't have that story. Yeah. I was not like five years old and coding, you know, whatever. So I'm like, if I can yeah, just yeah. get it in the door somewhere and just see where my skills take me, you know, I was open to that. So it was a product support role. I had already applied to this company for like a QA position back in the fall. And there was a, another general assembly grad who works there. And so I reached okay. out to him and was like, Hey, I'm going to apply to this. Do you know anything about it? Can you give me a referral? He did. He's been so great. And so I went through that process, um, got the offer, negotiated on the offer. I was very proud of myself for that. It's my first time ever negotiating or needing uh, to. Awesome. Yeah, it was a big deal. It felt like a big deal. Um, so yeah, it's hybrid. It's on a law firm software. So I'm glad that it's still okay. software related. You know what I mean? Um, they know yeah, I want to yeah. be an engineer. So, um, and he actually took a different type of a role when he started in, I think in a year and a half, he's got now an engineering role there. So there's definitely like oh, no way. room to like get in and move around there, which I'm, I'm excited about. It was a little bit like, I think it was a little bit disheartening at first, just because we like, I've worked so hard for, you know, yeah. engineering to not feel like I got there, but I'm just trying to stay open to like that. where things take me and be grateful that I've got this. And I don't know, there might be something else I find there or now that I'm like in the industry that might be better suited for my skill set and things. So we'll see. Yeah, no, that's super cool though. And there's, you, you dropped a lot of kind of knowledge nuggets in there. It's like- So much. It, I just thought it spoke so much. <laughs> well, well, the the- yeah dominic and jason uh i've got a bunch of folks in here got the avenger avengers <laughs> assembly in the chat here but yeah i guess I, I don't know if it's a spicy take that you're saying but you know working unpaid like it's definitely a privilege to be able to do that because yeah, like, like you were saying you know like it's i i always have trouble giving advice sometimes because it's like like if i want to get a job i'm gonna do whatever it takes to get the job yeah you know, Same. like within legal means, obviously, but like, yeah. you know, and, but I also have the privilege of like, I can spend time in the evening working on things. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, I, I have a job. So like, I could do all that if I wanted to, I could even do something unpaid if I wanted to. And so like, so it's like, it's, I don't know, it's like, it's tough to, to recommend what you're saying. I'm not saying don't do it, you know, cause you did oh, it, yeah. and it worked out no. for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever but it's, works. Uh, yeah, no, I recognize that too. And that's why I like, you know, 
I was juggling a lot. Like there was a lot, mainly just like mindset shifting between all those things was kind of hard, you know, <laughs> like blocking out when I'm going to yeah. do what and just being responsible to that many people to get things done was tough at the same time. You know, I'm getting experience that other people would love to have the opportunity to. And I was just glad that like my, my business that I, you know, built was able to like sustain mm -hmm. me. And it was, it was rough. Like we're definitely grateful to have a full-time job now. Um, and we'll be able to yeah. rest a little bit easier here in this household, but, um, but it was still doable. Like I could still do it, you know? So it was definitely. A yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's still like, I mean, you know, you did a lot to land that first role. And I think that's, that's like hat tip to you for sure. Like, uh, um, uh, got a question in the chat from, uh, Jason. Uh, he's wondering, did you start in tech or fitness? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll let you answer that. Uh, started in fitness. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I went back to school later in life. So I was a dental assistant in a past life. Um, not on the resume cause it's so far back, but, um, Okay. I did that for a, a, like eight years and then because I wasn't ever really sure what I wanted to be when I grew up and then I got into okay. fitness and loved it and then did that route for six plus years and then new yeah. pivot. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. And I hear you about not knowing what you want to do. Like I, I did end up going to university for computer science, but I didn't grow up like uh, you know, I want to be Bill Gates or I want to be some super nerd. I, I was like, I don't even remember what I had for breakfast today. And then, you know, and I had f people in high school or like in grade seven, like I'm going to be a doctor. And I'm like, yeah, I, I have no idea what I want to do. Like, and I don't know if they do this in high school anymore, but they, they, they used to have like, you, you like figure out your career kind of thing. Yeah. Like this like, stuff, yeah. 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 And like the, the, the job I got was, I was supposed to be a cheese maker, which don't get me wrong. I love cheese, but like, I feel like that job probably would have killed me. Uh, yeah. I probably just would have ate all the product, you know, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, I, um, yeah. Do you feel like when you went, when you did your computer science, like, do you feel like you understood what that meant at that time? Because it's obviously, it feels a lot different now than what it would have been like when you were going yeah. to university because part of the reason why I'm, sometimes I'm like I wish I would have known that this was an option for me when I was younger um but I yeah. really didn't get introduced to it until basically moving to Atlanta and it's like a tech hub and I'm like oh my friends my friends are doing this yeah. maybe I could too um it wasn't really on my radar at all do you feel like what did you envision when you were doing computer science and that you thought you'd be doing yeah even when I started like like uh, I'm a lot older so like <clears throat> I, like in before I went to university, like uh, they have this kind of like pre-university in Montreal. It's it's only in Quebec where I live, but so it's, it's it kind of gives you the option to like try stuff out before you start paying oh, for okay. university. And like I ended up, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I failed like my first semester because I was just hanging out with my girlfriend too much and at the time, and and then I ended up taking like elect. I ended up being in creative arts, and at the time you could just take anything. And so I took, I was always good at math. So I took some math courses and then I, I took a, a C plus plus course, which I had never done before. And I, I did well in it. And like, literally that's the only reason why I decided to go into computer science. Like there was no like huge revelation or anything. And, um, you know, after that, like I went to university and I still didn't know if that's what I wanted to do. I, I mean, I love making web pages and stuff with like a lot yeah. of people when they because it's just so instant you see it right yeah, away like yeah. even, even back in the 90s yeah but like even university like you know i graduated but like i honestly was more focused on sports like i played rugby uh at university so like that really was more what i was focused about but the thing i learned honestly was people are very important because like uh I'm assuming it's kind of like this with like maybe with trainers and stuff too, or I feel like you've probably done other sports, but you know, like I didn't know anybody when I went to university and then I played rugby and I literally like day one, I knew 70 people yeah. and then I met the no, women's family, team with yeah. another 70 people. And then, and then after that, like even nowadays, like, like it's our, it's our bank, our reunion, a university reunion this fall. And it's like literally all the old boys and and old, I don't know what they call them. They don't call them old women. The, I guess they call them the old girls. But basically, 
like literally every player from 1969 to today shows up to this thing, oh, uh, assuming wow, they're cool. as, assuming they're alive. Um, yeah. But but uh, and so it's like literally this huge network of people. And like I never like you, you hear Taylor talking about networking, and yeah. all people talk about networking, and I still never like that term. But like it, it it's it's the one thing I learned is it's people that you know, obviously you have to have some kind of skills, but like, yeah. it's the, it's the people that got me to where I am today. Like my first job, it took me forever to land my first role. Mm -hmm. I, I was working internet technical support. I was doing administrative work. And then I literally got my first job by luck and, and like good timing. I was at a rugby practice one night. We, we used to go out for beers after, and my future boss was on my team and he's like, Hey, we weren't you in school. He gave me at the time a, a CD-ROM uh, of Visual Basic 6, which if you haven't heard of it, it's just an older language. Um, and he's like, if you want the job, just, you know, follow the tutorials in here this weekend and come in on Monday. I I'm probably skewing the story a bit, yeah. but like, that's essentially it. That's, that's how I got my, <laughs> but that's how I got my first job, like real programming job. And then after that, like somebody else I played rugby with got me hooked up somewhere else. And then... You know, and then working with other people when I went to another job, they ended up working there at some point. So they're just like, come work here, you know. And so, you know, the it, it really is people uh, I, I, again. Yeah. Like Jason saying soft skills and relationships are key. Um, yeah. It's like, you know, yeah, and, and, and that's why it's like, you know, it's so good not to be an asshole. You know what I mean? Like, like something you do today, like, like I, if I help out somebody who knows, and I'm not expecting anything, but like, who knows, maybe three years down the road, Hey Nick, Oh, I heard you're looking for work now. Thanks. When you helped me out there, uh, so-and-so is hiring. You want me to introduce you or something? I'm making some, something up here, but, uh, you know, I think that's important. And the thing, the funny thing about university was, yes, I got a degree, but I wasn't as interested as learning in learning when I was at university and it was only until I left university that I was more interested in it. And now it's like, it's like, cause like a lot, like one of my buddies in sales, it's like, if we go camping or something, he's like, what are you reading? And I'm like some programming book. And he's like, yeah, he's reading nerd books again. You know, it's like, anyways, that's, well, that's me rambling on. That <laughs> university that it was, current because that was one of the things like that I struggle with with doing exercise science is that by the time textbooks get their you know information they're already like 10 years behind what the industry yeah, is practicing yeah. so I was always reading and like doing you know con ed but it was not through my university like I don't think yeah. I use anything related to what I learned in university in my current training practice Put yeah that way for sure you. Yeah, I feel that also because the thing is like nowadays, if you if you take university courses for programming, there's mm -hmm. probably like like programs for web development, like like there's literally there was literally no Internet courses when I took it. So like I learned HTML and CSS okay, and JavaScript yeah. on, on my own. And okay. then and so the thing that university gave me, even if I kind of like ignored it a lot, was like uh they talked about databases data structure all the things you hear about when people talk yeah. about like leak code and stuff yeah and yeah. but but the thing is they didn't touch on anything like testing and um you know like uh, how to how to write the code you know potentially it was really more just like you know small small assignments and like like for databases, all they ever talked about was normalizing data and stuff because like you don't want to have duplicate information, which which has changed a lot over the years because now when you have like NoSQL databases, having duplicate data is not necessarily a bad thing, I think, in some cases. And so it's like it, it, it wasn't current at the time. And yeah. it was, yeah. And I, I, this kind of ties into to boot camps and stuff too. Like uh, it's not the same thing, but because I've spoken to a lot of people in boot camps and it's like, I get that you only have a certain amount of time that you can teach people. And it's, it's really hard. Like you can't teach people like testing, um, accessibility, all of it. Like it's, it's, it's so much in, uh, to do, you know what I mean? And it's, and you know, they, it's probably not like they don't want to do these things. I think given like the time frame they have, it's mm -hmm. like, 
this is what the best they can do. And and a lot of the boot camps, it's the React focus because a lot of people are trying to hire for React devs, like if we're talking yeah. about web development. So so that's usually kind of the way it goes, you know. So, uh, I don't know. It's yeah, I, I think our like um like our DSA stuff was like <laughs> like a three hour like Hey, just so you know, you're about to graduate in like a week and you might want to check this out. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Here's a book that you can read. Um, but they don't, I mean, they don't sell, or at least I didn't feel like I was sold comprehensive, Yeah. you know, understanding by the end of it. Like, you know, you get out what you put in, wherever you start is probably going to likely dictate where you end up. Like I started with knowing nothing. Um, mm -hmm. So I definitely struggled quite a bit. Um, and so, and that's on me, you know, part of it, like yeah, being yeah. more prepared to go into it and then it would be more of like reminders or like a little bit more complexity. Um, yeah. And then I've seen, there's a guy that I, is I'm, so it's a TA now for my, um, boot camp. I've been doing that for like six yeah. months, but there's a guy right now and I'm like, like, why are you here? Like, I feel like <laughs> you know more than some of these instructors and like his is like a confidence thing, but okay. like. I mean, I'm just like, you just need to go get hired. Like you are like, so there's just so many levels and then they're trying to teach to everyone's level, which is hard, but, um, yeah, it's yeah. still, I, think, I still like it because it does create a little bit more accessibility for people. Um, mm -hmm. than, the, than a four year degree, you know, like if, if it yeah. meant me going back to school for four years, I don't know if I would have done it. Um, so I think it opens up and then like the free resources that people use, um, like a hundred devs and stuff, I think is great, but yeah, yeah, there's that there's a free code camp. And the, the other thing too, is like, cause I'm in Canada and I'll be honest, I did not pay a lot for university. And like, I hear about how much people have to pay for in yeah. the States. It's like, bananas. It's like, like, yeah. like when I was in university, uh, and I'm sure the price has gone up since, but like. It was five thousand dollars Canadian a year, uh, you know. Um, yeah. So, and I was there for like four and a half years, so figure twenty grand, and I and I left without any debt, because mm -hmm. I was in a, well, for a couple of reasons. I have I, I definitely have privilege here. Like my parents, you know, they saved up for an education fund. Like uh, I'm doing this with my kids too now, but like there was money there, and you know. Not that my family was rolling in dough or anything, but like, you know, I had that privilege to not leave university with debt and and my, even my internships helped me leave with some money and stuff. So, um, yeah, thanks for all the follows in the chat there, by the way, and the, and the subs too. Um, yeah. So, and, and like, I don't know, it's, it's just bananas to me when I hear about like, like, uh, like Kyle Shevlin, who I know who's on Twitter, I know mainly from Twitter, but we're not best buds or anything, but he's talked pretty publicly about like student debt. And it's like wild, like him and his wife both had degrees and I think masters and like the bills they racked up. It's just like, like, I don't understand how you recover from that. Like people clearly do, I think, but like, anyways, um, I, don't, I don't know what many yeah. people do um, actually, but yeah, it's rough. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not that I want to turn this stream into a, a U.S. Yeah, education. Yeah, I'm gonna totally. I mean, I get to work on that for a while, but we won't go there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, get, get kind of getting back to to you and stuff. Like, I think that's super cool. All the things you did to get where you are, and I love that you just reached out for help. And you're totally right what you're saying about like, like obviously it's the internet, so there's always gonna be assholes out there. But yeah. I would say in general. Most of the people I've interacted with in the developer community have been pretty awesome, um, you know. And and like you said too, just just reach out and say like you know you know have a question. Don't just say like you know like the typical when people make fun of these weird DMs they get like, hey, what's up? Or like you know yo you know. It's like just if you're gonna if you're gonna ask somebody a question like like even somebody like Kenzie Dodds is is super helpful, but you yeah. have to, you kind of have you kind of have to go in there with the like. Kent, uh, I tried this, I read your blog post and this isn't working. Curious if you have any ideas, you know, it, it might take him a while cause he's obviously got a lot of followers and stuff. But like, I think if you're, you're very clear what you want to ask, uh, people typically are out there to help you. And 
and the other thing too is like you don't necessarily need a mentor and like my, my friend becca who you know she wrote a blog post recently and i think it went out today i'll find it but it's talking more about just community can be your kind of mentors mm -hmm. to some degree you know like like obviously you can have a mentor there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that but um i'm just trying to find her post but like you know i think communities are, are just great um you know just they're they've been just so helpful if anything it's just a group of you know common people potentially to help you out with something or just it's just nice having a community you know like i've been part of virtual coffee which she created and yeah. um that's been one of my favorite communities for a while there's there's all kinds of other great communities too like uh, uh i don't know if james is still here or not but he has yeah, to learn to teach one. yeah yeah there's that, honestly I mean, so many that I felt like I had to, well, first I'm like, let me join them all, you know? Um, but then to actually yeah. be engaged in it um, can be kind of overwhelming, especially Discord overwhelms me, period. But yeah. um, just like so much going on. But yeah, it's almost just like, that's something I'm very grateful for in tech is that there are so many resources. So like, for yeah. me, it felt like if I'm not taking advantage of all of these things, like, what am I doing? You know, <laughs> like, yeah, there's just so many ways to get the help that you need. And like I said, accessible ways to, you know, and everyone, yeah. like I said, that I've reached out to has been super helpful. Um, and then, you mm -hmm. know, on LinkedIn, I know there's a big network, you know, because, uh, you know, the algorithm helps you. But, you know, I've got yeah. a pretty big network on LinkedIn where we're all looking for that first job together. And so just like talking on there and then you get more people in the same boat as you. Um, yeah. I know people have shared like what they're working on project wise, and then they'll get people who show up in their DMS, like, Hey, you might want to try this. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just, sure. it would be, yeah. I don't know how you can take advantage of it. Um, there's just so many resources, uh, in this industry yeah. that I really appreciate. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I'm just going to mention, uh, Becca dropped the link to the post I was referring to. Uh, I think she released it today. Um, so check that out in the chat. Um, there was yeah. like, a, um, and here in Atlanta, I'm sure they have some other places too, but there was, I even went to this, it's like, what was it called? Code and, <laughs> Code and Chill or something. I don't know. But okay. yeah, I mean, I'm on a Saturday morning and like, you just bring whatever you're working on or, um, whatever you want to help with. And we met at like Pont City Market and I was literally okay. in there like, Hey y'all, I'm in an internship. This is what I'm working on. Who can yeah, help? Yeah. Like, and people there were just like spending their morning just, you know, for the fun of it, trying to help me figure out my <laughs> email thing. Um, yeah. so it was just, yeah, so much. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah. And I think the, the thing too, is there's more resources out there these days. Like, not, not, not to make myself sound like an old grumpy man, but like when I, when I first started in tech, like Stack Overflow didn't exist, like Google kind of yeah. just started. So like, so Dark like days. I used to, yeah. So like I used to like, I don't buy tech books as much these days, but like I used to buy more, like I used to work in .NET. So like I was always buying these like .NET books to learn things and, and you know, maybe it was there, but I didn't notice it as prevalent, like having mentorships. Um, like, like, I don't, I can't really think of anybody that mentored me, honestly. Like, I mean, I had people that helped me out every now and then, but it didn't feel like it feels like today where there's so many great resources, plus people to help you out. <laughs> oh, I like what uh, Triple B is saying in the chat, APIs and IPAs. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I could do that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and uh, uh, is yeah, that a Lucy and Zelda. What's that? Is that a meetup group or? Uh, I don't know if that. I don't know if that's just, uh, just Michael <laughs> just doing something on a Saturday night. APIs and IPAs, okay. or if it is. <laughs> but if it isn't a group, it should be one. Like, that's uh, catchy. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, a Lucian, uh, I think that's how you pronounce your name. Is saying, uh, oh, you saying uh, Michael saying it's pretty sure it's a group. Uh, Nowadays too, though, that like a Lucian saying, there could be too many resources, including yeah. AI, so it, it can be overwhelming. Yeah. Which I definitely I, felt I, that at some point I kind of had to like yeah. slim down what I was like feeding into, if that makes sense, because there was just too much. Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Um, so yeah, 
we we're, we got about five minutes left here. Uh, I got to say, this has been like super fun. Um, I, I finally cooled off. My core temperature. Yeah, you look has, good. Uh... You got like color again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but that was it. <laughs> yeah. No. It, honestly, it was it was a, it was a tough workout. Like a good like a good tough workout. The uh, uh, I the I the last set. Like if I did that last set of the uh, all the yeah. the kettlebell stuff, I think I probably would have just uh, kind of like. Uh, but yeah, uh, aside, aside from that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause, cause normally in the morning when I'm working out, I have that huge fan blasting yeah, because yeah. like, like I'll be doing it over zoom with my trainer and the people and we typically mute ourselves while he's talking. So like he, he never hears the fan and, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's but, yeah, a whole so. different animal not having air. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, anyways, yeah, but, um, um, but I'm going to drop some more links if folks want to give you a follow, I highly encourage you to give Anna a follow on Twitter, all her socials. Um, if you are interested in training, like, like, like working out, you, you're still doing that obviously, right? Like that's still, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. I'm, I'm moving some stuff around because of like my new job. So, you know, earlier mornings, yeah. you know, later evenings, but I'll still do my one-on-one -on -one, um, stuff and then programming isn't affected at all. So, um, okay yeah cool cool yeah uh, yeah My, michael's saying i still have the sweaty sheen going on uh <laughs> he, he's he, he he's talking Boy. about tech cold, cold fusion i i did a bit of that back in the day that was like a funnily it's it's an older uh technology but anyways uh that's michael being funny so i love it um, i mean it's been fun i'm glad you um i'm glad you had the idea because this is I mean, it's training, so I love it. Um, have a great yeah. time. I was happy to talk about my journey too. Well, glad that I can share that I, you know, have a job now. Because when we originally talked about scheduling this, I was still looking. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm happy. glad it worked out this way. And um, I don't know if you're comfortable saying, but it, do you do you mind? Do you want to say like where you're going to end up working, or do you or you want to? Oh yeah, it's for called, now? Hush, hush um, for now. No, it's called Adirant, and um, okay. like I said, we're a local company niche market and they're they've just been continuing to grow so everyone that i've spoken to there has been promoted at least once or twice since being there and it's only most of them like a few years and then people kind of stay um so my boss and my boss's boss okay. that was kind of like their they were kind of not career changers but like that was their first job out of um college and in a different kind of field and they've stayed so it seems as if the culture is great um okay so but it will definitely be a change working the the nine to five. So yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. For like working for myself and then working for corporate. I guess I've never worked corporate before. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, honestly, all the best. Like it, you're gonna be nervous. Like I was nervous my first job. Uh, you know, it, it's totally okay if you don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. I think. I think the one. Th thing I can say like over time like like I have confidence in knowing that I can learn something I know yeah. that I don't know everything and no I, nobody can obviously but I think if if you can get comfortable with getting a little uncomfortable and then learning things I think that's that's like a superpower you can keep with you as you go along so uh yeah but but yeah I'm super pumped that you're you're starting the, the new gig and I'm okay. honestly super happy we got to meet at Render this year. I'm I'm hoping to be at Render again next year. We'll see. Render was so uh, fun. If people missed it. Was. it like, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, looking forward to this year for sure. It was a blast. Cool, cool. Um, we're we're all, we're pretty much at time, folks. Uh, there's no stream next week because I'm actually flying out to the Rock or 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 for folks outside of Canada that is Newfoundland. So. I'm going to Newfoundland for a little bit. Uh, so no stream next week, but I'll be back. Um, I'm going to drop the schedule. Um, the next stream, it's going to be with B Dougie, Brian Douglas from open sauce. Uh, I'm just going to check what the date is for that. Cause it's, it's not, in, is it in two weeks? Let me check here. Uh, whoops. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Streaming schedule. Yeah, okay, it's gonna be yeah August twenty third. So not next week, but the following Wednesday. Gonna be hanging out with B Dougie. So 
super excited about that. We're going to be talking about the open source project. There's some new things happening there. Uh, so we're going to dig into that. And uh, yeah, hard to believe we're, we're getting close to September. Holy guacamole. All right, cool. I don't know. Well, here. yeah, yeah. Well, thanks again, Anna. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thank and I'll see you all in a couple of weeks. And uh, great stream. And thanks for uh, putting me through the grinder. <laughs> You're welcome. See ya. Bye. Later, everybody.